Round 6 of the Brasili Rao is over, but in a party mood because the 24th of June is known in Brazil as the Feast of St. John, who's famous for being the festive saint. So, farewell party! Flamengo start Fortaleza's momentum in a night marked by the send-off of an idol. Party in Bragança. After a perfect week with wins over Giants, Corinthians and Flamengo, Red Bull stomped over defended Libertadores champions Palmeiras to go top of the lead. Three coloured hangover, not all ended on a happy note in round six, the Tricolor, São Paulo and Grêmio once again fell to win and remain in the relegation zone. The Brasileira magazine of round six starts now, so come and enjoy the party with us. Flamengo and Fortaleza went head-to-head -head in the legendary Maracanã in Gerson's last match for the black and red colours. The club from here suffered a harsh defeat in their own backyard in the last round against Red Bull, but for this game they had the return of striker Pedro to try to get back onto the winning path. On the other side was Fortaleza, who were coming into the game trying to hold on to their invincibility in the competition. Moments after kick-off, keeper Felipe Alves got it all wrong outside the box. Pacino was gifted a chance, but the forward sent the ball too high. In yet another mistake from Fortaleza's defence, Bruno and Hiki didn't waste the opportunity. The winger stole the ball inside the box and opened up scoring in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the goalkeeper. Michel ran past the midfield in an unbelievable move. He stopped Tony when he went face-to-face -face with Felipe Alves, who pulled off a beautiful save to avoid a second. Once again, Bruno and Hiki caused problems. After receiving a good pass from Pedro, he finished off after he got help from the defenders to double the score. Flamengo 2-0 up. Fortaleza came back in the second half firing on all cylinders. Edison was heavily involved with a perfect pass to David G who stuffed the net to beat Diego Alves. Another unbelievable opportunity missed by Flamengo. Gerson received on the right and forced Felipe Alves into a brilliant stop. Matosinho almost scored on the follow-up, but Marcelo Benevenuto was there on the goal line. Game over in the Maracanã, Flamengo secured a happy farewell party by Gerson and ended Fortaleza's unbeaten run. São Paulo were winless in the Brasileirão as they hosted Cuiabá at the Morumbi. And then Crespo's side were affected by injuries but needed the victory to get away from the relegation zone. Cuiabá was seeking their first triumph in order to escape from the bottom of the table. The first half was mind-blowing. On the 18th minute, Orihuela found Benitez on the edge of the box. The number eight let the ball pass through and ran to receive Rigoni's assist in front of the goal. He finished powerfully. No chance for Volta. It was the Argentine midfielder's second goal for San Paolo and the third assist from his compatriot. Cuiabá got the equaliser soon after. The defence failed to clear a free kick and the ball fell to Marlon. He set up for Rafael Gava's stunning finish. What an absolute cracker from Rafael Gava, the number eight for Cuiabá. Wow, what a finish. The ball found the angle of goalkeeper Chaga Volpi and tied the match for the visitors. On the 39th minute, the comeback was completed. In a quick counter-attack, Rafael Gava got the ball on the right and crossed to Elton to produce a diving header. The ball went straight into the back of the net. It was the striker's eighth goal of the season. 2-1 in the Morumbi. San Paolo managed to equalise. Diego Costa sent the ball to Brigoni on the right and the Argentine made the perfect cross for Gabriel Sara. The number 21 went higher than the defenders and headed into the right corner to draw once again. What a first half in the Morumbi. In the second period, the Tricolor had a golden chance to notch their first victory. On the 75th minute, the Zero made a fantastic long pass to Victor Bueno, who entered the area and finished nicely. But the ball hit the post. 
The tie keeps both teams winless and at the bottom part of a table. It's the worst start of a Brazilian round in the history of São Paulo, who lifted the state championship only a month ago. And next up is the battle between the best position teams from São Paulo. Red Bull were undefeated and Palmeiras were looking for their third consecutive win. The Massa Bruta wanted to make the home factor count and remain near the top of the table. Palmeiras wanted to keep their momentum going and pick up three points away from home. Artur finished from outside the box. Vinicius Silvestri was able to palm the ball away but delivered it right to Italo's feet who had the easy job of pushing it into the net. The mistake from the keeper led to the first in the Nabi Abi Shedid. The comeback from the visitors started with 16 minutes on the clock. Scarpa got the ball in the middle, set up and shot. The ball flew really close to Clayton's post. Victor Luiz found Davison with a good pass. The striker was wide open for the header, forcing a smart save from Clayton. Almost an equaliser for the Greens. Italo goal update. Italo, having a perfect evening, entered the box clear from the defenders and finished past Vinicius Silvestre to score his second goal in the match. Bragancino 2 0 up with a lovely goal from the striker. Bragancino almost scored a third after a good exchange of passes that got the ball to Alino, but Vinicius Silvestre was there to stop the ball from reaching the net. It was another 1 2 where Scarpa was involved, this time with Davison but the midfielder was stopped by Clayton once more. Victor Luiz crossed from the left and found Breno Lopez, who delivered a first-time shot and scored a brilliant goal. Palmeiras reducing the scoreline in Braganza 2-1. Palmeiras had an equaliser in mind, but Italo had other plans. Artur received from Ejimar and set it up for the forward, clear from the defenders to score his hat-trick. That was the end in Braganza Paulista, a lovely match from the home side and a perfect evening for Italo. Red Bull keep going up the table. Atletico Goianiense took on Fluminense at the Antonio Ascioli in Goiania on Wednesday evening. The Dragons came with a similar lineup from previous games, hoping to continue the streak of good results. That was also the case for Fluminense with an attack formed by veteran Fregi and young promise Kaiki. Fredji had the first clear cut opportunity in the game after receiving a good pass from Gabriel Teixeira. A solid effort from goalkeeper Fernando Miguel, preventing the first from the away side. Atletico Goianiense also went on the attack with this shot from Nathaniel that went just wide. No breakthroughs in the first half. But it took only two minutes after the break for Frederick to cause trouble after he got on the end of Nene's corner kick. The striker headed well, but was denied once again by the Dragons keeper with another beautiful save. After a spectacular exchange of passes in defence, Atletico had one of the best opportunities in the game. Arturo Gomez received a deep pass from Janderson and left Nathaniel at close range with the goalkeeper, but the number 11 hit the post and missed an unbelievable chance. With less than 15 minutes to play, and De Luiz received in the box, went past Nino but finished wide. After pressing hard in the second half, the goal finally came. Artil Gomez got the ball on the right and found Natan in the box to score. That was the winning goal with a strong header. With the victory, Atletico climbed above Fluminense in the table and closed the gap on the leaders. In the Arena Independencia, America Monero took on Juventudi with both deep in trouble in the relegation zone. With a single point in five matches, the team from Belo Horizonte were looking for their first win in the Brasile Rao. The home side arrived with high spirits after the last round's win against Sport and were aiming to move up the table. The Rabbits started in decent form with new manager Wagner Mancini. With only five minutes on the clock, Hippemar headed unopposed after a corner kick. But the ball went just wide, grazing Marcelo Canonez's post. Juve continued relying on long shots, this time with Rafael Foster. The defender almost hit home from a free kick, but missed the target. After a smart pass from Mateus Jesus, Paulinho Boyer beat the defenders and was taken down. Penalty. Top scorer, 
Matteo Spichotto took responsibility and converted. Juve and Judy 1-0 up. The match slowed down after the goal, but Juve still looked positive. Westlake tried to surprise Juve's defenders with a free kick that went just wide. America though didn't give up and got the leveller. Iberman was brought down by Didi. Juninho Valora converted to make it all even in the Arena Independencia. Juve had the chance to take the game when Matez was shot in the final minutes, but with no success. 1-1 and a point apiece. Port Inchins came into this one on the back of three defeats at home, but this was a good chance to put things right against the Sport Hesifi side who were looking for only the second win of the campaign. Port Inchins were forced to make changes. Sport were at full strength for the match in San Paolo. Soon after kickoff, Gustavo Silva broke forward and squeezed the ball past Mayelson from a tight angle. But after a VAR review, the player was found to have been just offside. Gustavo Silva's head didn't drop. He continued to take the game to sport and hit the post. The Musketeers almost in front in the Neo Chemico Arena. Gustavo Silva again. Cantillo launched the ball forward, but the youngster rushed his shot. Another great chance, though. Bercinio then let fly and forced Cassio into making his first save of the night. From the following corner, Sabino came close to putting Sport in front as his header sailed over. But just before half time, Corinthians went ahead. Mateus Vital and Gustavo Silva combined. The cross was strong and bounced off centre back Yaga Maidana for an own goal. The Musketeers in front. After the break, the home side thought they killed it off and Joe struck out a leg to knock the ball into the net. A much needed goal for the striker who had been suffering up front. Corinthians then almost made it three with Joe once again at the centre of things for the hosts. Sport tried to make a fight of it. Patricky hit a good cross, Juan Victor fell to clear and Trellis dived in to give his side a chance at a comeback. It was all too late though and Corinthians held on to take the three points. Sport continued to struggle at the wrong end of the table. Without a win since the first round, Sierra hosted Atletico Mineiro, who went to the Arena Castellar with a perfect record away from home. Under pressure, Guto Ferreira sent out a similar lineup to the last few matches, while Kuka was without 14 players and struggled to put out a competitive gallo. The absence of Starman Vina from the home team's starting lineup drew special attention once again. The start couldn't have been better for the home team. On the third minute, goalkeeper Everson messed up and delivered the ball to Lima. The midfielder took a long shot, aimed at the far post and scored. What a goal! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, out of nothing. What a terrible mistake by Gallo's keeper. In the final minutes of the first half, another error by Atletico's defence. Guga messed up, Mendoza got the ball. The number 10 then struck a great pass to Jorginho inside the box. He finished powerfully and produced yet another great save from Everson. Total domination of the home team in the first half. The visitors improved after the interval. Hulk progressed through the middle and sent a bomb with his supposedly weaker right foot. The ball went close to the keeper's post. On the 72nd minute, Atletico Madero finally got the equaliser. Guga took the corner. Hulk headed to the middle and centre-back Gabriel appeared to send it into the net to make it 1-1. Looking for the win at home, Guta Ferreira subbed in Vina. The number 29 seemed determined to end his bad run. The match was only resolved in the final move. Deep into stoppage time, Vina took a free kick towards goal. Defender Gabriel Lacerda headed and once again had huge help from Everson to give Sierra the victory. And Vina certainly enjoyed the assist. Game over at the Castellao and a dramatic win for the hosts. The players celebrated while Kuka and Gallo went to complain to the referee as he blew the final whistle. 2-1 to Sierra. 
Chapecoense went head to head with International Verena Conda looking to get out of the relegation zone. Chappy began the game with Agnesio as a new feature in the starting 11. And Uruguayan manager Diego Aguirre returned to Internacional's bench after a spell of six years. He had to wait only five minutes to celebrate Internacional's first goal with Kai Vidal. A quick one to put the Colorado in the lead. Felipe Santana nearly leveled the score on the 22nd minute mark with a good header. Patrick he received from Edgen Nilsson and dribbled past Mateo Subiro to send a lovely pass to Yuri Alberto to score the second for the away side. But Shappy weren't done in the game and reduced the score with Derlan. He took advantage of Habanelli's cross and sent it to the net with a header. Shappy Coenzi almost drew level the shot from Mauricio outside the area, but the ball smashed onto the post. Mauricio, another strike and he hits the crossbar. So close from the third goal. A minute later, the Colorado put keeper Jean Pau to work with two straight saves. Late on, Internacional came close to burying Chappi. But Tricky had an open goal but couldn't reach the ball. The game heated up in stoppage time and Bruno Silva hit sub Pergolo with a nasty tackle. Punches were thrown and both players were sent off. Keeper Danilo Fernandes also got expelled after the VAR revision. An intense end to the match, but Internacional picked up three valuable points away from home. Bayer battled Atletico Paranaense in their Pitasu in Salvador on Thursday evening. Manager Jorge Machado put on the field the best he had in search of the win. The Hurricanes had a tough task away from home to get back to the top position of the Brazilian realm. The game started in an intense fashion. With 11 minutes on the clock, Hitch had raised his leg a little bit too high and hit Rodriguinho in the head. The referee didn't hesitate to show the red card to Atletico's midfielder. Five minutes after Hitchin was sent off, Hossi's corner kick found Patrick De Luca. The midfield opened the score for Bahia with a header. Even down by one player, Atletico had the strength for a comeback. Abner went on the attack and found Tenens, who turned on the defender and finished nicely to level the score in Salvador. Back from a changing room, the away team kept up the pressure. Christian received from Carlos Eduardo near the area and nailed the post. But only two minutes later, Bayer put a dampener on Atletico's plans. After a mix-up in the box, the ball ended up with Hossi, who had the easy job of sending it into the net. 2-1 Bayer. But only two minutes later, Bayer put a dampener on Atletico's plans. After a mix-up in the box, the ball ended up with Hossi, who had the easy job of sending it into the net. 2-1 Bayer. Hossi almost killed the game off in the final minutes with a brilliant free kick that hit the post. And it was still time for another man from Atletico to be sent off. With the numerical advantage, Bayer took charge of the game in the final minutes and secured the win, punishing the visitors to their first defeat in this campaign. Gremio and Santos locked horns in Porto Alegre. The hosts had lost all their games in the league and were desperate for points. Gremio were hoping for great things from youngster Victor Bobson. The away team had begun to pick up some form under coach Fernando Ginez and kept the same team that had beaten San Paolo in the last round. The game got off to a flyer. After just four minutes, veteran striker Diego Souza struck to get the Tricolor an early need at home. In the first three minutes of the game, too much pressure made by Gremio. But Santos came back swiftly. Marcus Guglielmi combined with Camacho and keeper Gabriel Chapico was beaten. One apiece. When it looked like all would be equal at the break, Vajera nipped in and then found Diego Souza, who in turn set up Mateo Senhiki to shoot. At the start of the second half, 
Fajera was looking lively and set out to cause problems, but Juan Paolo was in a defiant mood. And then when Santos needed him, the star appeared. Mourinho struck a superb shot to leave the keeper with absolutely no chance. A wonder goal for Santos. End of the match in the arena. Gremio picked up the first points in the championship, but are still to win. This was a good point for an improving Santos. Let's take a look at our top 10 goals of the season so far. In this round six, a valuable point was secured by Quiobat in the Bourne B when Hafil Gabba nailed a shot in Thiago Volpe's top corner. A lovely goal. In the 5-1 blowout against Internacional, one of Fortaleza's goals was his beauty from Iago Pikachu. A first-time stunner at the entrance of the box after a throw-in from Chinga. Another first-time shot, this time by Breno Lopez. The forward finished with his right and stuffed the net of goalkeeper Marcelo Carni in an important victory of Palmeiras over Juventuji. A free kick in our top 10. Lima hits this with precision to score the equaliser for Sierra against Internacional in the Berahio. No chance at all for the keeper. In 6th place, an incredible match that ended 3-3 with a beautiful goal from Quejo. Red Bulls Argentine went past the defender and sent a shot straight to the top corner against Mateus Klaus. Midfielder Gian Motta appears in the top five with this missile from deep outside the box. With extreme precision, he found keeper Hitch's top corner in Santos's 3-1 win over Sierra in the Villa Balmiro. Young right back, Vanderson, waltz through Sierra's defenders to score a work of art in the Castellón. In third place, a humiliating dribble, defender Vasero couldn't even stay on his feet after what Wesley did to him before scoring a beautiful goal in Palmeiras' 3-1 win over Chapecoense. Our runner-up showed a lot of skill to score this one. Adelaide finished with a brilliant back heel after a free kick and sent it straight into Diego Alves' top corner. This helped Red Bull beat Flamengo in the Maracanã. You won't see many goals scored like this. But our undisputed winner is from young Flamengo striker Rodrigo Muniz. He delivered a perfect bicycle shot to score a sensational goal in the Maracanã. Clayton Lepp that couldn't reach it. A goal that was really something special in an exciting game against Red Bull Bragancino. The best save of round six goes to Felipe Alves. After a nice play by Flamengo, Gerson had everything going for him to score in his last match wearing Flamengo's shirt. But Fortaleza's keeper kept him out. Despite the sensational save, the Lions weren't able to avoid the defeat against Flamengo. The Maracanã was the stage for the best skill of round six. After Flamengo's defence cleared the danger, Edison won the heading contest and passed to Homerinho. Fortaleza's winger then performed this brilliant non-meg on Michel. Homerinho's invite to Michel to Samba earns the Fortaleza man the best skill of the round award. Let's take a look at the best players and the manager who stood out in round six. In goal, we've gone for Fernando Miguel of Atletico Goianiense. At right back, Adelan from Red Bull Bragancino. The central defenders, Gabriel Lasada of Sierra, Gil of Corinthians. At left back, Delan of Chapecoense. In midfield, Rafael Gava, Guiabá. 
Raul, Red Bull, Patricky, International, up front, Bruno Hiki from Flamengo, Italo from Red Bull, Yuri Alberto from International. Our man on the bench is Mauricio Barbieri from Red Bull Bragoncino. The best player of round six couldn't be anyone else than Italo. He ran the show in Red Bull's brilliant 3-1 win over Palmeiras. The forward scored a hat-trick for the Massa Bruta in the game. Congratulations Italo, the best player of round six. Six rounds in, and the Campeonato Brasileiro has some interesting names near the top of the table. Braganchino lead the way, closely followed by Atletico Paranaense, Fortaleza and Bahia. Big names Palmeiras are outside the top four, and they're followed by Atletico Goianiense. At the wrong end of the table, there's also big names such as San Paulo and Gremio stuck in the relegation zone. Extra money in Flu's account. Fluminense will receive around €340,000 for being a training club of defender Marlon Santos, who recently signed for Shakhtar from Italian club Sassuolo. The 25 year old defender played in the junior squad from 2009 and was promoted to the senior team in 2014. He had 71 matches before being sold in 2016. Gerson's farewell in the Maracanã. Defensive midfielder Gerson has played his last game for Flamengo against Fortaleza in the Maracanã. He was sold to Olympic Marseille for around 25 million euros. Loved by the fans, Gerson won the Libertadores, two editions of the Brasileirão, the South American Recopa, Supercopa do Brasil, and two state championships. Before arriving at the French club, he'll defend Brazil's team in the Tokyo Olympic Games. Round 7 is on the way with an action-packed Sunday. There'll be nine games during the day. Juventucci and Flamengo clash swords in the opening battle on the Alfredo Giacone. A little later, Fluminense take on Corinthians in Rio de Janeiro. The round continues with Palmeiras facing Bahia in the Allianz Parque and Grêmio go head-to-head -head with Fortaleza in Porto Alegre. At the same time, Atletico Paranense take on Chapecoense. The day ends with Santos, Atletico Mineiro, America Mineiro International, Sierra San Paolo, and Sport Hacifi against Cuiabá in the Ilha do Hachiro. Round 7 of the Brasilia Rail closes on Monday when Atletico Goianiense come up against Red Bull Bragantino. That's it for this week. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the toughest, most exciting league in the Americas. And we'll be back next week with more action from the Brazilian Realm.